Hello, we're back here with another viewer requested video, and we have a lot to get into today, so we're going to hop right into it with the question reading, I've been having bad anger issues. I think it's the negative issues in my life and uncertainty of my future prior to retirement. Do you have any advice for the subconscious and or consciousness to help during meditation? And to say the least, I have a lot to say about every part of this, and so we're going to touch on as much as we can while staying organized saying practical and realistic given your situation, my situation, someone else's situation. We'll stay at a high level of altitude for the specificity of the information, but if you want anything to be in more finer detail, then let me know in the comments below. Let's go. So first, before we get into anything, let's first give some props to the viewer because they, in my opinion, correctly identified that the anger issues are simply the top of the pyramid. They're not the roots that we should be trying to rip out of the ground in order to kill the weed. There's the anger issues that are coming to fruition because of negative issues in life and stress about the financial well-being of our future selves, but those are now manifesting from our conscious and our subconscious minds. So let's start at the bottom of the pyramid, first with the subconscious mind. So first, what even is it? Well, to me, it is the culmination of who we are. Everything that's seen on the surface and unseen from our past. It is who we are that is guiding us on this trajectory forward, whether we are aware of it or not. So how can our subconscious minds be guiding us towards a life full of anger, full of stress and worry? Well, let's break it down. First, what are you filling your mind with? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What sensory information are you choosing to surround your conscious mind with? that is boiling back down below the surface as we drift off to sleep, that is now implanted deep into our subconscious minds that are now guiding us when we're awake. Are we overindulging in the news, in horror, in pain, in suffering of others? Or are we choosing to dwell in those feelings within ourselves? Are we victimizing ourselves instead of reclaiming that empowerment that we have, that all of humanity has? that all of life has. <laughs> Next, what are we affirming to be true about ourselves? Do we make a mistake or seemingly fail at something and say, oh, I'm a failure, I messed up, I'm dumb, I'm stupid. These offhanded comments that come from our subconscious minds without our conscious recollection of even saying them, they are something that must be identified, understood, and accepted and then molded into uplifting statements that are truly aligned with who we know ourselves to be, or at least who we want to mold ourselves into. So what do we do when these disharmonious statements are being uttered from us, almost like a reflex? Well, we choose to empower ourselves through self-talk and also suggestion. At the very least, my recommendation is first thing in the morning, literally the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night is time should be taken by yourself, alone and away from distractions, with ideally nothing but the moonlight or the sunrise, where you are stating statements that you aspire to be true by yourself, to the point where you're saying them day in and day out, and over time, they're beginning to truly be aligned with yourself. <laughs> you're programming your subconscious mind to be acting in ways that are harmonious with these statements that you're claiming to be true about yourself. So you may begin with statements as easy as, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, and I am balanced and full of love. <laughs> and beyond that, you can add to it, you can take some away, you can build in any direction that you want, anything that you want to actually have in your real life. So long as you're using the present tense and you're using characteristics that mean something to you, that generate feelings within, and beyond that, you simply have fun with it. <laughs> you allow the words and the statements to flow from you, and it begins to be empowering in and of itself. I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm balanced and full of love. I'm kind and I'm cared for. I'm loved and I'm respected. I speak my mind with clarity and compassion, and do so in ways that are harmonious with all and in alignment with my vision of earning financial freedom through the goods and services that I co-create that facilitate the success of others and are built upon the foundational understanding, knowledge, and wisdom of the mind, the body, and the spirit. Co-creating these goods and services brings me into a deeper state of flow where I transcend beyond any fear, doubt, or indecision 
and I can live a life that is in harmony with those of whom I love, and in alignment with my truer purpose of Ikigai. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we gotta have fun with it. <laughs> say whatever you want and say whatever is meaningful. So the last thing I'll say about that is I trust that you will find a time in your regular schedule where you can fill your mind with nothing but connectedness with all. And you can allow these statements to come to the surface. And over time, you can take any disharmonious statements and you can kind of wash them off and polish them down and ultimately have statements that are aligned with who you wish to be. Someone who is happy, who is blessed, who is regularly tapped into financial well-being, whatever it may be. That was the subconscious mind. And now before we get into anything relating to meditation, now let's talk about the conscious mind. First and foremost, with anything that is happening in your daily life, it is imperative that we recognize what is catalyzing us to be reactive, to be overwhelmed, to be stressed, to be angry, to be upset, to be whatever it is that is disharmonious to how we want to be living our lives. Identifying these external people, environments, circumstances, and information are going to allow for the most substantial amount of self-growth. There is room for us to live our lives in ways that we're taking in stimulus that is in harmony with our goals and also going with the flow, being meek as you will. And this first begins with the mental diet. I've made countless videos on this in the past where we are making it our top priority of only dwelling in thoughts and surrounding ourselves with external people, environments, circumstances, and information that is in harmony with our goals. So perhaps your goal is having financial freedom for your retirement and having a worry-free way on getting to that destination. All you have to do is recognize what in my life is not aiding in my ability to have that right here, right now. Do you need to fill your mind with hours of the atrocities that are going on around the world or worrying about the pandemics or the power grids or what have you. I mean, I don't know what you're doing with your free time or what you're doing with any of your time, <laughs> but what you can be doing is to surround yourself with anything and everything that is going to be empowering, whether it's helping you directly or indirectly, and you can make that call. I'm gonna take a break here and show a four minute video clip from a recent Joseph Rodriguez video where he's simply sharing a story that came from Neville Goddard. I personally found the story to be incredibly meaningful, and whether it's practical or not, this is something that I encourage us all to hear. Now one of my favorite exemplifications of this passage was the story of Abdullah, Neville Goddard's teacher, who was an Ethiopian rabbi. Let's read parts of the story. I said to Abdullah in late October, Ab, you know I've been gone from Barbados for almost 12 years. I came here in 22. It's been 12 years, and I've never had a desire to go back. But now I have a hungry desire, a haunting desire to go to Barbados. Not a thing stops me, but a lack of money. I have no money. He said to me, you are in Barbados. I said, I'm in Barbados? He said, yes, you are now in Barbados. And so you see Barbados, and you see America from Barbados and you can smell the tropical land of Barbados. See only the little homes of Barbados, and that's all you do. You just simply sleep this night in Barbados. Well, I thought him insane, really. Well, nevertheless, that night I slept in Barbados. I assumed that I'm in Barbados in my mother's home, and that I saw America relative to Barbados, and it wasn't under me that night. It was north of me, about 2,000 miles. Well, the next day, I didn't tell him anything. About a week later, when nothing happened, I thought I would approach him. This time, we've moved into November. I said, you know, Ab, there's no, not a thing that has happened. He wouldn't discuss it with me. He turned his back on me and went back into his little library and slammed the door. About three times, I tried to open up the discussion with my friend Ab, between that moment when I first talked to him and the end, he would never discuss it on the basis, how could he discuss with me how I am going to Barbados when I am already in Barbados? And if I'm faithful to my assumption, I can't discuss the how, I'm already there. 
while this went on. On the morning of the fourth day of December, there's no job, no place to go, and the last boat that will get me there by Christmas is going to sail on the sixth. Under my door is a little letter from my brother Victor. So in the letter, he justifies why he's asked me to come. I know you don't have a job, and there's no excuse for not coming, and I notified the Furnace Witty line that you'll come for a ticket. Well, I was so excited. I rushed down to the Furnace line. They said, Yes, we have a message here from your family in Barbados. We'll give you a ticket, but we haven't any first class tickets. You can go third class and use the facilities of first, but you have to sleep third class until you hit the island of St. Thomas. When you hit St. Thomas, someone disembarks and then you may take a first class bunk. I said, I'll take it. I rushed right up to Abdullah and I said, Ab, I got my ticket for Barbados but I have to go third class. I'm elated and happy about it. He said, Who told you that you are going to Barbados? And who told you that you went to Barbados third class? You went to Barbados and you went first class. He would say no more. He isn't even happy that I'm going to Barbados now. So I went down on the morning of the 6th day of December with my third class ticket, went up to the desk. As they're checking in the passengers, I put my ticket forward and they said, I've got good news for you, Mr. Goddard. Someone has canceled and you're going first class. And I went first class all the way to Barbados, 10 days down, 10 days back, with three heavenly months in Barbados. Now, whatever your takeaways are of that story in that video clip, all we need to really reaffirm is that it is important to have an increased level or an enhanced level of faith in ourselves and this external reality. At the end of the day, we have no idea how reality works, and perhaps it is far simpler than we're putting any meaning to. So now let us close with two forms of meditation. Number one, we are isolating insight, and number two, we are encouraging creativity. Both of these play different roles in our lives and in our practice, but they are equally as meaningful. So first, we have isolating insight, and the practice, in my opinion, is closing your eyes, sitting away from distractions, perhaps having some kind of sound going on in the background that helps us focus. Here, we want our eyes to be closed and focused on a single point behind our eyelids, <laughs> just as we'd be sitting in a classroom, paying attention to the teacher, and zeroed in on what's going on. We want to do the exact same thing, but with our eyes closed, and it's something that may seem weird at first, but overall, it's fairly easy to do. And in this state of being, we want to have these random ideas coming to us, and some of them are going to be completely random and have absolutely no meaning to us. <laughs> we can simply recognize that this is an idea, this is a thought, this is a feeling, this is whatever, kind of label it and disregard it, and then hop back right on to that focus. That is the baseline state of what you want to be dwelling in. And eventually, these thoughts that are coming into our minds, they're beginning to compete with one another. <laughs> you're going to be having these random thoughts that you're not paying any time to. And eventually, you're going to have better thoughts that are actually worth spending time on. And perhaps those thoughts are recollections from the past that bring about some kind of feelings that we haven't even tapped back into for a very long time. And perhaps there are new ideas about how we can live our lives moving forward. The potential is endless, and that's the whole point. <laughs> now, whether you're like this viewer that is having anger issues, or maybe you're sad, no matter who you are or what you're going through, there is value to be had from this isolated insight meditation. And now, the form number two, we have encourage creativity. Now, for me, I may like to go for a walk, or go to the gym, or play tennis, or what have you. And for you, there is something out there. Believe me, <laughs> whether it's painting, whether it's singing, whether it's dancing, or what have you, as long as you remain open-minded and you trust that you can do anything you want with your time and you can find deeper meaning so long as you're presently aware of what's going on. Ultimately, the take-home message here is to find your own form of creative expression. And ideally, it is something that helps you blow off steam, relieve stress, and maybe even work up a sweat. These are all going to help you 
physiologically in ways that are going to improve upon your mindset. So take that as you will, and I'm sure you'll find meaning in some way, shape, or form. My take home message for you, viewer, and for everyone else is to find what it is that you're good at, what you enjoy doing, what you can get paid for, and what is actually needed by others in ways that are feeling right within. And all you have to do is do that every day. Stay open-minded, explore different possibilities, but remain true to that goal that you have at the forefront of your mind. Disregard anything that is disharmonious to that goal that you have and allow this world to unfold before your very eyes. Enjoy the process. Thank you, thank you, thank you.